Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is Saturday, May 4th, Major League Baseball. Got my hockey jersey on. You're getting ready for game six for the Stars by the time you're watching this. The game's either happening or it will have happened. Hopefully the Stars can finish out the series there. It's my own personal fandom uh, with regards to that. But we do also have hockey picks over uh, on uh, Dub Club if you're interested in those. The model had a really just terrible start to the playoffs. Just couldn't catch a break whatsoever there. Um, every single empty net goal went against us, whether it was like a, a goal that happened or didn't happen or, or, or whatever. It didn't really matter. But but going back in the right direction here now, I had, had the Leafs here and uh, both games, uh, what, five and six, and had the Stars here the last couple games and uh, uh, had the Preds to win that last game. And so uh, things things maybe uh, turn it around for us here in the hockey model. So that's fun too. Baseball model-wise, uh, just a very forgettable Thursday. Short slate. So, uh, you know, anything can kind of go any direction. We missed the, the first five. The biggest one was we missed the first five over in the Astros-Guardians game. And, of course, we missed that. And then, But we got the full game over. And so, you know, that's just kind of the way it goes sometimes. You're, you're going to play one or the other. And, you know, you're going to split – and you should just play the one, or you're going to play the one, you should play the other, right? It's just, that's the ups and downs of it. That's why we kind of call, always come back to the season overall, uh, where the A-grade sides, uh, you know, a little bit of a downturn right now, not going in the right direction, but at least the first five totals and sides continue to overall do really well for us, still holding on to double-digit ROIs uh, there. And, of course, the parlay that they didn't have one for Thursday, but we do have one for Friday. Hopefully that will help for us. Uh, again, by the time you're watching this, uh, you, you'll you'll have a good idea of how that's uh, how that's gone. Uh, again, though, all the picks, the parlay of the day, the play of the day, uh, everything you could ask for with regards to information, summaries, details, weather, all sorts of goodies over on Dub Club. That link in the show description. We'll start you out with a 10-day free trial. Along with it in our Discord chat group, we have a lot of fun, but we also help each other out, give each other advice, give each other suggestions. Uh, it's a good place to access me if you want to pick my brain about things. You can have a lot of expertise with both statistics, modeling, baseball, all sorts of insights that I like to pass along. If people have questions for me, the Discord chat group is the place to be for that. You can only get that through Dub Club. Some quick reminders, information about the model and community rules, professor.com slash new. Weather is subject to change. We're about 25, 24 hours or so from most of these games. <clears throat> we are protecting an average game. Who knows what will happen in one game? And that's why we always talk about anything is the is a good bet at the right price. We're always talking about shopping around, getting the good price. We're talking about what the price is needed to be in order for it to be a good play, a great play, a smart play, etc. cetera. Thresholds we're going to talk about today are for the full game money line, but the first five thresholds, the run line thresholds, all of that information over on Dub Club. But as always, take what you like and leave the rest. Last but not least, if you can like the show, we would like that. Starting off your Tigers and the Yankees, the one early game here on Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern first pitch, about 60 degrees for this one. Wind will be blowing in at almost 10 miles an hour. It's going to make it play pretty pitcher friendly. We've talked about this again. Yankee Stadium might play a little bit more hitter friendly in the summer when it's hotter and the wind's blowing out. You can have those hot New York summer days. Uh, but here early in the season, overall, the park plays slightly pitcher friendly on average. Uh, early in the season, still with 60 degree temperatures, going to play a little bit pitcher friendly as well. And then the wind blowing in is going to make it play even more pitcher friendly. So a run suppressing environment. For this one, Casey Mize and Clark Schmidt. Casey Mize has looked great in his five starts, 308 ERA, the advanced metrics. Kind of aligned with that for the most part. FIP aligns right with it. XFIP's a little bit higher, but the bottom line is he's pitched better than his projection this year. The only question, of course, is how fast do we adjust? But he's going from a below average pitcher and trending towards average. Clark Schmidt for the Yankees, 319 ERA. FIP a little bit higher, XFIP. A little bit higher as well. Probably not quite as good as Eddie Array, but another guy who is trending toward average. And so far, he's gotten about two average, as you can see on screen there, that 101 grade. 100 is average. Where lower is better. He's gotten, uh, he's, he's uh, you know, into <laughs> that average range. If he continues to pitch like this, he'll get into the better than average range. Both of these guys have looked good so far. Uh, interestingly enough, both of these bullpens have done really good so far. Both of them rank pretty high in how they've done in the first month. We don't want to necessarily overreact to them, but the model still says both of them are just okay, you know, decent, but not great. 
Uh, and so when you kind of cancel out the bullpens, kind of cancel out the starting pitchers, the Yankees offense and being, being at home is the reason why they should be favored. The model says they should be priced at minus 166 and the A-grade threshold is minus 150. Anything in the minus 150 seems pretty reasonable to attack the Yankees on this one. They've been a pretty good team all season here, 20 and 12. The Tigers have been pretty good too. The, the difference is that we just have to try to figure out how much to react to what we've seen and how much to use previous data that we've got on these teams. And the bottom line is that while the Tigers have played well so far, the Yankees have played well and we kind of thought they might be pretty good. It gives us a little bit more credence to back you than worries. The Tigers might have had a good month, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll continue to do that based off what we see from them. Their offense still leaves a little bit to be desired. And I kind of went through this yesterday, right? A lot of the offenses in baseball that have struggled this year, and the Yankees offense hasn't done necessarily great, kind of middle of the pack, but the model still thinks that they'll be just fine. I outlined today for everyone in Dub Club, wrote up a little, I'll call it an article. It wasn't like, you know, an article necessarily. It wasn't, you know, didn't have an editor, right? But I wrote up about the Rays and their early season struggles and how we're projecting and kind of outlined for the most part, uh, for our people over on Dub Club, went through some of the specifics of, you know, the models reacting to what's happening and adjusting probably more aggressive than many other models that are out there. And so, you know, the Shinkies offense hasn't looked great so far, but the models not, you know, shouldn't react anymore, I guess, is the bottom line. And if it reacts anymore, it's just going to be way out in left field on how extreme it's reacting. So we still think the Shinkie offense is a lot better, and that's going to... Um, give them a much higher probability of winning than the market thinks again 62 percent uh, would make anything minus 150 or better a pretty reasonable investment to start off your work saturday red sox and the twins about 50 degrees uh for the totality of this game may be warming up a little bit as the game goes along when will be blowing out or across about 10 to 15 miles an hour this is when you're going to want to check back in on the wind direction if the wind is blowing across this is going to play fairly pitcher friendly at temperatures around 50 degrees if it's blowing out it's going to play maybe only barely pitcher friendly you're talking about a difference in projecting the number of average runs kind of more in the uh you know upper sevens to lower eights uh, around eight kind of makes sense for this, but which side of eight you're on will kind of determine be determined based off of which direction the wind's going. Is it actually truly out? Is it more across, et cetera? That's assuming we get Chase Anderson for the Red Sox. They have not confirmed a starting pitcher. This is just two fan graphs lists. Uh, if it is Chase Anderson, of course, the twins will have a massive starting pitcher. They'll probably have a massive starting pitcher no matter what happens in this game. Pablo Lopez is really good. According to Silent, the eighth best starting pitcher in baseball. A great example of a guy who his ERA is a little bit inflated, but we're constantly talking about it. If you're new here, you need to hear this. If not, you know what I'm about to say. ERA is not the most predictive and best metric to use when assigning talent and value to a pitcher. It assigns all of what happens to a pitcher in cases where it should only be 60% or 70% or 80%, and it, and it gives no credence to a pitcher on an unearned run when maybe it should have given more than 0% of that. And so, you know, earned runs is a very crude tool. And I'm not saying it's completely useless, but when we have these underlying metrics, everything that's useful in the area is wrapped up in the underlying metrics as well. So there's really no need to look at it. It's just something that we can easily calculate. Some of these other stats might be harder to calculate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they can't be more predictive of what's going on. And Pablo is a great example that he's given up a few extra earned runs this year, but his FIPS in the upper threes, that's about where he projects his X FIPS in the low threes. He will be just fine. One of the best pitchers in baseball, still very underrated. And the guy I love the back because people just don't realize how good he is. How good he is, how good he's been. Offensively, both these offenses are pretty run-of-the-mill. Both bullpens pretty solid, like both of them. Again, the biggest difference will be whatever happens at starting pitcher. Don't know if it's Chase Anderson or who it'll be for Boston necessarily. But again, the Twins are going to have a pretty big edge there. We'd have the Twins favored. You can see on screen, if it's Chase Anderson, what we would have. But a full update coming in the morning on Dub Club once we know who's pitching. And again, picks will follow that. White Sox and the Cardinals, also another 2 p.m. game, uh, one of three here. This time, it's the upper 70s in St. Louis, slight breeze out. Park might play slightly hitter friendly. Eric Fetty and Lance Lynn. Fetty has been really good uh, so far this season. 260 ERA. FIP, uh, XFIP in the low threes. FIP at four. I mean, done, done a great job. And another guy, uh, kind of like I mentioned the first game, 
trending towards average. If he keeps pitching like this, above average. So far, he's been above average, absolutely. It's just we can't ignore what we know about these guys in the past, especially for veteran pitchers like this. But going in the right direction, you have to be very pleased with him if you're a White Sox fan. Obviously, also, if you're a White Sox fan, I apologize for, for this year. You know, my condolences, really. Um, but a guy who's increasing his trade value, uh, you know, the White Sox obviously looking for the future. And if Eddie keeps pitching like this, he's going to get a, a, a nice little haul. The question is, again, how good can he be going forward? I doubt he's able to continue with this 260 ERA. I think the truth is probably somewhere between what we thought at the start of the season and how well he's done now. The model still says slightly below average, but again, so far, so good. He's done well. I'm just not necessarily convinced he can be quite this good, but but so far, so good. Let's see if he can continue to do it. Let me flip for the White Sox. I think it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. 264 ERA, but both the FIP and the XFIP and the mid to upper fours. I think he's average. I think he'll be just fine. I'm not convinced this is the Lance Lynn of old. I know the ERA is good. It's 30 innings. Let's not overreact to that because I'm just not sold that it is. Now, a couple of factors to kind of mitigate that. Number one, the Cardinals bullpen, fantastic. Been preaching them all season. The fact that they have such a good bullpen, Lynn does not need to go more than five innings. That helps him. He doesn't have to worry about facing the heart of the lineup a third time. Also helping him. Facing the White Sox, don't have much of a heart of the lineup. Their offense has gotten a lot better with worse their grade since they've added Tommy Pham simply because they've added a competent hitter and removed yet another terrible one. It's still a bottom five offense at this point, especially with some of the injuries they have. Now, if they got a couple of those guys back, which I don't think it'll, I think it'll be quite a while before that happens. But if they're fully healthy, their offense is just bad. Now it's with those couple of injuries, it's very, very bad. At least Pham makes some not, you know, in the in the cellar, but it's still a bad offense. So that's going to help Lynn. The bullpen's going to help Lynn as well. So I, I'm sure he'll have decent results here against the White Sox, but I'm just saying I don't think he's quite as good as that ERA is. And so when you look at the ERA, you might think, oh, the you know Cardinals are shoe-ins to destroy the White Sox because Lynn's pitching so great and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I, hold off on Lynn. Like, I'm sure he'll do fine, but I'm not sure he's quite what that ERA is. And I'd say the same thing about Fetty as well. I think both these pitchers are very solid, uh, but maybe not quite as good as that ERA would lead you to believe. Obviously, the White Sox bullpen, terrible. Cardinals offense hasn't done very well so far, but the model still thinks they're okay at least. The Cardinals are big favorites. They should be big favorites. I said the same thing about Friday's game as I will about Saturday's. The question is just, are they favored by enough? Sideline says they should be priced at minus 182. The current price of minus 173 does not quite reach the A grade threshold of minus 164. We're kind of squarely in between where it should be and the ideal price. That means the Cardinals probably would be worth a look at this point. Uh, again, numbers tend to balloon further and further out. So if you're able to get one of these minus low 70 type numbers, I think it's worth a small investment, maybe part of a money line parlay. Maybe you're playing it on the run line instead as the home team. I'd personally play at the minus one if that's where I'm investing. Maybe not quite as much value in this Cardinals game as Friday's. Again, Friday hasn't happened yet, so we'll see how that goes. But I think right now the number is okay. It's not terrible. Uh, you know, we have to be careful about laying too big of a number. Maybe not quite as much value here on Saturday as Friday, in my opinion, simply because I think on on Friday, and again, it hasn't happened yet, so I may look like a fool saying this, but when you look at Friday's game, you expect, don't know what will happen in one game, you expect Sonny Gray to come out there, pitch really well, he's a great pitcher, and you expect Soroka for the White Sox not to be very good. You expect a pretty big mismatch there. And in this game, I think the starting pitching edge for the Cardinals is just a it's just a whole lot smaller. And so maybe just a little bit less value in this one. But I still think it's Cardinals or pass for the full game. For the first five, that's the only place you could take the White Sox, given how terrible their bullpen is. And given the edge that the Cardinals are going to have at the bullpen, if you're taking the White Sox, it's got to be first five. If you're going full game, it's got to be Cardinals. Make sure you find a good price. Again, my thought, either put it in a money line parlay, a two-team, or be responsible, be safe with it. Don't try to you know, win the lottery and, and go 15 for 15 on Saturday on something like that. I mean, if you do, I mean, that could be fun, but that's not going to help you make money in the long run. Uh, you know, Either either like a two-team money line parlay, maybe the minus one would be the way I'm looking at the Cardinals. But again, as, as always, I'm shopping around. Folks, 
bet us is a good account to have to shop around i'm not saying make every bet there but you should have multiple accounts and bet us is one that has good prices there are a few others out there as well that you should definitely have and bet us is one of them that's going to get you some good prices shop around find the best price because especially on money line markets like this where one team's favored by a little bit more one book's going to be offering you 170. One book's going to be offering you minus 200. And that's a pretty big difference. So shopping around at multiple books, having the opportunity to play in the minus 170s is going to make this a whole lot smarter of a pick on the Cardinals, a whole lot smarter of a money line parlay play at minus 170 that will be at the Cardinals minus 200. If you don't have an account there yet at BetUS, don't delay. Sign up today. A link in the show description will get you a 125% bonus, not just on your first deposit, but if you need more, the next two after that. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Last game here at 2 p.m. Brewers and the Cubs to 20 p.m. A little bit after two here. Low 60s for this one. Wind will be blowing slightly in, slightly across, 5 to 10 miles an hour. Could matter a little bit because it's Wrigley, but the wind won't be overly strong is what it looks like now. Weather patterns in Chicago can be a little bit finicky, and it matters so much in that part. So there's a reason why most books won't hang a total on this on these games in Chicago until day of, or at least light the night before once you have a better idea. So kind of keep an eye on it because it could matter. Right now, I would say it's going to be slightly pitcher-friendly. Maybe not quite as pitcher-friendly as Friday's game was, but still a slightly pitcher-friendly atmosphere. Tobias Myers for the Brewers has done very respectable in his first two starts. Very okay pitcher. 106 grade towards the bottom of starting pitchers. And of course, you may have noticed this, by the way, by now. 100 is the average grade for pitchers, but the average pitcher who's actually starting in Major League Baseball uh, is is better than average, if that makes sense. The the, the median pitcher is better than average. So <laughs> you'll see something like this where he's, you know, telling it's a good example, right? Gets a 100 in grade, one grade, but the median pitcher, according to the rankings, would be ranked like number 74. Um a little bit higher than that because, uh, you know, the way the average is, the skewness, the fact that we've got, you know, the ratings don't include pitchers that are in AAA and some of that stuff, but the grades kind of encounter everybody who's in the database. So anyway, just as an FYI for that, if, if that matters, it shouldn't. But, uh, you know, minors, again, you know, slightly below average. That makes for a towards the bottom end of starting pitcher, but not terrible. 450 ERA in his 10 innings. FIP a little bit higher than that, X FIP a little bit lower. Eh. You know, uh, Jameson Italian so far in his first three starts, again, the earned runs have been great. FIP at four, XFIP at 450, probably closer to average than what he's done so far. I know it's been a great three starts for him. I don't think he's going to be able to keep that up necessarily. He might against the Brewers. This Brewers offense started off the season the first couple of weeks. It was just lights out. And then I just I feel like they've gone pretty cold ever since uh, those last couple of weeks. And their grade ha had peaked up into the 100s is now kind of falling half a point a day or so. After I plug Friday's game in there, if nothing changes, it's one to nothing in the eighth inning right now. It'll probably drop another point, right? Because they just continue to, to not look very good like they had that little run to start the season. Uh, so, so two pitches that are very okay could have some success because of the fact that they're playing, uh, you know, slightly subpar offenses, slightly pitcher from two sets of relievers that I don't really trust. Cubs are at home, so they're favored, I guess, is where we're at on this one. The model says that it should be priced at minus 121. I'm seeing minus 120 right now. So this one's priced really well as of right now. And it's hard to really say there's a great lean anywhere here. If you're going to play first five, you, you know, maybe there's an edge there. We'll see what those markets offer in the morning. And maybe there's an official first five pick on this one. But just looking at this situation, you know, I'm not dying to really back anything. I'm not dying to back these offenses. I'm not really dying to back these starting pitchers. I'm not dying to have any part of these bullpens. So could be a game that we just pass on uh, and say there, there's other there's other fish to fry here on our Saturday afternoon. Rockies and the Pirates, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, you know, three games starting at this time. So a handful of games kind of at a lot of different starting times, which is nice. Uh, low 60s. Wind will be blowing in at 10 to 15 miles an hour. That's going to make the uh, what is a slightly hitter-friendly ballpark play much more pitcher-friendly. 
Austin Gomber and Jared Jones. Jones has been really good so far in his six starts. A prospect who, you know, kind of came up and the model said he'd be okay. It had him in the low hundreds. Now he's down to a 96 grade. Again, 100 is average, lower is fewer runs for both offense and pitching. Uh, just continues to improve, look better and better. Uh, you know, SIPs maybe a little bit high, but his ex fip at 250, I mean, his projection gets better and better. By the start, he looks great. I mean, there's really just nothing else to say other than you know, young kid comes up and looks good. Of course, you have to imagine what Skeens will look like because Skeens was high, more highly regarded than Jones, and of course, we may be a mere week away from his debut as well. So, the, so the Pirates have a couple young pitchers here. Uh, Jones being one of them, you know, have to be very pleased if you're a Pirates fan with with what you see from him. Austin Gomber, 450 ERA, FIP a lot higher than the XFIP in line right there with there. Not a very good pitcher. You know, maybe not the worst, but not a great pitcher. Bullpen-wise, this Pirates bullpen, concerning. Maybe not quite as concerning as the Rockies bullpen. The Rockies offense, by far and away, right now, the worst offense in baseball, according to Silent. The White Sox got some reinforcements with FAM. Uh, the Rockies haven't, and you saw their struggles in Mexico City in that atmosphere, not being able to score runs. They've had so many struggles at home scoring runs. The Pirates offense, I'm not overly high on. I'm not high on this Rockies offense either. And at this point, everything points to the Pirates. They're big favorites. As always, the question is, how big of a favorite should they be? And this is the sort of game where I think the model really helps us out because we're not going to play every favorite. We're not going to play every dog. We're not going to blind one or the other. But we have a way to help us figure out if the price is right. And and this is why you, you might want to be with us over on Dub Club because the number that I'm talking about now might be long gone by the time you're watching the show, but you'll get these projections before any other sports book comes out with a number. So you can get the projection, have in your back pocket and know here, you know, it's Friday afternoon right now, but you would know by Friday, you know, noon or, or, or so before anybody's come out with anything that, that, that my model here says the pirate should be favored at a price of minus 180. And you might be able to say, okay, well, based off of that, uh, you know, I know exactly what price I'm supposed to get. The model here says minus 163 is an A grade. So, hey, minus 165, probably worth a play. And you know, hey, that's when I should be taking a bigger favorite in that situation. But otherwise, you know, maybe they're priced uh, too extreme. Right now, it's minus 190. So right now, you would say I'm going to pass on the Pirates. I'm sure it's like not playing the, the Rockies uh, at plus 175. Uh I'd have to have like a super A grade to back the Rockies on the road. It feels like, especially uh, given that I do like Jerry Jones. Uh, but the point is, is we're going to play some of these favorites and it's good to lock them in early because the numbers get higher and higher. And there's times where you look at the favorite and just say, let's pass. This one I think is one where it's pirates are passed, but the price is so high. I'm probably just passing on the pirates, at least full game. We'll see first five in the morning. None of that's out right now. So I can't even talk to the first five market yet. But again, we have all that projection as well. So you can see that information. Lines come out whenever you're available to shop around for them and look and say, yeah, here are good prices, here are not good prices. So it's a good tool to have in your toolkit again, available over on Dub Club, all these projections that you get each and every day for all the sports that we do. Um, so, so something to take advantage of there. But again, right now, uh, I'm not dying to back the Rockies, but in the price like minus 190, as you can see on screen, minus 190 is a little bit of a too steep price with the Pirates. It doesn't mean they don't win. It just means that baseball is random enough that laying a price like that probably isn't worth it. And of course, in general, not always, but in general, the run line market tends to follow along. All the other peripheral markets tend to follow along. And that if there's not a lot of value in one, there tends to not be a lot of value in the other. That's not always the case. And that's the biggest thing about first five is that you can sometimes have that differential because of the fact that it's how we're seeing the starting pitcher versus the bullpen and how much that matters and the interaction effect, because sometimes a weaker bullpen, again, allows a starter to be a little bit better, stronger bullpen, better, weaker bullpen, maybe makes them a little bit worse. Cause now what are the team going to do in that fifth inning? Right? So there's just a lot happening there with the first five specifically, but otherwise it's hard to say that there's going to be necessarily great value anywhere on the Pirates, as much as I'd love to be able to say, oh, we'll just take them on the run line. The run line might be priced a little bit high too, but again, all those thresholds, again, you can get over on the club. Blue Jays and the Nats, chilly afternoon in Washington, low 50s, maybe mid 50s, slight breeze in what is a hitter friendly ballpark is going to play more pitcher friendly here on Saturday, going to have more of a negative weather impact than the positive park factor for Washington, Kevin Gaussman and Jake Irvin. Gaussman's been very eh so far, 450 ERA, but the underlying metrics are still pretty solid. 410 FIP is a little bit high, 393 X FIP. It's maybe slightly higher than his projection. I still think Gaussman will be fine, and he should do pretty good against the Nats offense that the model just doesn't think is very good right now. We've talked about them so far. 
this season. They've done okay, but when you end up again with some of the guys that are playing in that lineup don't really have a history of being great hitters, you have to be a little bit concerned that they aren't going to be able to keep it up. The Blue Jays offense, I, I'll say, I've said before, I say this, so far they've been terrible. Uh, they started off terrible. And, and they couldn't figure out. Then they had a little mini run where they started hitting the ball a little bit. You thought they were going to figure out. And then, and then it's gone back to being terrible again. They're still number seven. They're still number seven just because, again, who else am I going to put at number seven? Because a lot of these offenses that are supposed to be good have really struggled. If the Blue Jays keep doing what they're doing, it's going to keep going down and down and down and down. It's going to get worse and worse uh, so far. It, it hasn't been good. Um, is that going to be the case? Are they going to continue to struggle? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, so far, it's not gone well. Will they be able to turn it around? I, I again, I, I don't know. I don't have, a, I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, but again, you know, it, it's hard to say. There's only so many offenses that have a history of players that have been good that you trust to do well that are also doing well right now. It's a very, very limited list. So the Blue Jays offense again grades out still okay because someone has to be ranked a little bit higher, but, but I, I don't quite view this as a, as this massive offensive edge for the Blue Jays as much as I view it as, I don't think the Nats offense is good. The Blue Jays offense, meh, probably reasonably middle of the pack at this point. There's not a big gap there between where the Blue Jays are now and dropping down to say, you know, number 19 or something like that. Biggest edge that the Blue Jays have, in my opinion, is going to come with regards to the starting pitcher because I trust Kevin Gaussman. I don't really trust Jake Irvin. Now his underlying metrics have been pretty solid this season, but I don't really think that's necessarily going to continue um, based off what we've seen from him in the past. He still projects to be a subpar pitcher. Uh, so this is a great, great game to, to, to think about. You know, how much do you care about this year versus last year? Again, we have a pretty well calibrated model. The reason we do well on the long run in baseball, not necessarily every day. Unfortunately, every day can't be a winner. But the reason we do pretty well in baseball is because we have a pretty good model that does a good job of balancing out and not overreacting to what we've seen this year and kind of saying, hey, I know Jake Irvin's looked good so far this year, but let's not overreact. I know this Blue Jays offense has been terrible this year, and we're going to ding them for that, but we're not going to say they're a bottom five offense necessarily, right? Let's not overreact to that. And staying that course is go is your best thing on average for prediction and leading – and, and, and keeping that in mind, we would have the Blue Jays at a 64% chance to win this game. A grade threshold for the Jays, minus 159 right now. I'm seeing a minus 158 out there, so it looks like you might be on the Blue Jays if you prescribe to betting A grades on the money line. You might look on an alternative market as well. You might look at a minus one, minus one and a half if you want to take a little bit of the bite out of the juice uh, or just go ahead and lock in a price like minus 158. To me, that's kind of right on the edge of where you're shifting from one to the other, but each one's personal preference. But it's Blue Jays or pass. I'm going to have faith that Gaussman is respectably fine, much better pitcher than Jake Irvin, and that the Blue Jays offense, let's not say that they're going to be a top five offense in baseball. I think it's clear that they're not going to be at the level – of the Astros, of the Dodgers, of the Braves, et cetera. Uh, but I still think they're an above average. They're still a decent offense. They're still a better offense in this one. So uh, Blue Jays are past. Blue Jays minus 158's current price would just eke into an A grade. Marlins in the A's, low 50s for the final 4 p.m. game here on the Saturday slate. Wouldn't be blowing out about 10 to 15 miles. It'll play still pretty pitcher-friendly there in Oakland, but in a daytime game, the ball might carry a little bit better than it normally does. Trevor Rogers against Paul Blackburn. Trevor Rogers has looked pretty solid. 431 ERA lines up with his projection, but his FIP and his XFIP are better than that. So really no complaints from uh, from me for Trevor Rogers. I think he's having a very solid year. Paul Blackburn, 334 ERA, having a great year as well. Uh, FIP and XFIP, both in the threes, uh, still doesn't project very well. The model's a little more down on him this year. I'm not really sure why. We loved backing him last year. Two very solid pitchers. Two pitchers I have no problem backing um, whatsoever. Uh, Bullpen-wise, this A's bullpen, again, as I mentioned, just continues to look better and better by the day. The Marlins bullpen, folks, I, I looked into it. When you look at the pitchers in the Marlins bullpen, I know they've been terrible this year, but like the underlying metrics for the guys who've been terrible, like aren't that bad. I think they'll be okay. I'm not really that concerned about the Marlins bullpen. I'm much more concerned about the Marlins offense, which is terrible. And that's the same thing I'm concerned about with the A's because that offense just has not gotten it going. So a game where I, I kind of think I have some more faith in the pitchers than the hitters, 
Uh, might be a good underplay here. Total I'm seeing right now is eight. Models projecting 7.6, so under could be a good way to look. Almost as the Marlins maybe should be slightly favored. Right now, the A's are pretty heavily favored. I say pretty heavily. The A's are reasonably favored in this game. I don't really want to, to fade Paul Blackburn unless I'm getting a great price. So that plus 110, I'm holding to that for the Marlins. It's got to be plus 110 or else I'm not playing them. Uh, but again, under might be a decent way to look at this. Another way to look at this could be the first five. Um, this A's bullpen continues to look good. The Marlins bullpen hasn't figured it out yet. I don't think it's going to be this long-term doomsday. They're terrible. I think they'll be okay. Uh, but maybe play the Marlins first five might be a little bit of a better look and just say, hey, uh, you know, especially if you're looking at a run line, maybe, you know, the tie gets you to the window and just say, hey, I don't have to deal with the fact that the A's might actually have a bullpen advantage in this one. So a couple of different ways you can kind of look at that one. Trying to the, in the Phillies, low 50s, Keaton Wynn and Ranger Suarez in a game that's going to play very pitcher friendly, uh, given those temperatures. Wynn looks like it'll be blowing across, but one you're going to want to check in on because it looks like it's a little bit out to start, a little bit in to finish. And so depending on the timing of that, could make it play fairly pitcher friendly or really pitcher friendly. But either way, I have one suppressing environment for these two pitchers who both have looked really good this year. Keaton Wynn, 318 ERA, underlying metrics may be slightly higher than that uh, but a very good you know he's done a great job ranger suarez 132 era a guy i've been high on for years now uh and an underlying metrics in, in the mid twos i mean if he keeps pitching like this he, he he will he will be a top 10 in major league pitcher in no time at all he has been great so far the model's been high on him we like both these bullpens uh philly's offense now did a couple tweaks uh to the model here and all of a sudden has launched a little bit ahead of the giants offense uh which Again, grades out okay because the park they play in, their overall runs might not be impressive. But again, remember, the Giants play half their, their games in a pretty uh, pretty pitcher-friendly environment. We've got the Phillies winning this 58% of the time. They're favored. They should be favored. I love Ranger Suarez. Should they be favored by as much as they are is the question. I don't quite understand this line. It's 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 pretty high at the current price of minus 160. Now, I don't think the Giants price is good enough to really, um, you know, jump at here. The current price I'm seeing for the Giants is still 10 cents away from an A grade. So I'm not jumping to fade uh, Ranger Suarez. Right now, we would be, it's kind of Giants or pass, but it's not good enough for me. So I'm going to pass in the full game. I'm going to wait and see the first five. So the full game uh, market might get better in the morning. Run lane market might be there. First five market might be there. Total market might be there. Uh, unfortunately, right now, I think the total market's lying pretty well with the model. Uh, but again, I, I, I like the Phillies. He, I, I, I love all their starting pitchers. I love their bullpen. Um, even saying the Phillies offense is better than the, than the Giants, I still, even at home, I just, I just, Keaton wins good enough. I don't know how you get to a price like minus 160. That's just really steep. So, uh, like I said, to me, it's Giants or pass. I'm passing for right now because I'm not playing against Ranger Suarez unless the price is really good. Uh, and right now it's it's decent, but not to that A-grade threshold. So I'm holding to that A-grade threshold for the Giants. I'm needing it to get the plus 157. Or again, maybe we'll attack first five in the, in the morning. Angels and the Guardians, mid-60s. Wind will be blowing a little bit out, a little bit of cross, uh, a little bit of chance of rain. In this one so something to keep an eye on uh reed detmers and ben lively two pitchers who've looked fantastic detmers 312 era underlying metrics are great uh rising up the rankings done done really well this year no complaints whatsoever and the benefit for him is being a lefty that bodes well the guardians offense projects much poor against lefties so that's going to be in his favor for the guardians Ben Lively, 230 ERA. The model was high on him coming into the season, and I was a little bit surprised. I was like, man, we didn't really love this guy in Cincinnati. Part of that was the park, I guess, but like we weren't overly in love with him. And all of a sudden now, the model was high on him coming in and has been justified. 297 X FIP, 295 FIP. I mean, he's been great. You got two pretty good pitchers who've looked good this year. The benefit for Detmers, he's a lefty facing the Guardians who are left-handed heavy. The benefit for Ben Lively, he's facing the Angels. And without Otani this year, without Trout right now, this Angels offense is really a concern. The other, of course, big thing here, along with the home field edge that the Guardians bullpen has, 
just a massive edge. I don't trust this Angels bullpen at all. And the Guardians bullpen is pretty dang good, pretty deep as well. I've got the Guardians winning a 64% of the time. The A grade threshold will be minus 160 in the Guardians. Uh, so anything better than that would be a pretty reasonable investment on them. Orioles in the red, 6.40 p.m. Eastern, upper 60s in Cincinnati. Slight breeze in, hitter-friendly ballpark. Might play a little bit less hitter-friendly than average, but still very hitter-friendly. Still expecting a lot of runs. John Means is projected to make his return to the Orioles after pitching a little bit last year, having all the injuries, the issues the year before that. Uh, 105 grade. The model's not overly high on him. He was just okay last year coming off an injury. He's going to have to prove it to the model before the grade improves. Andrew Abbott, the results have been there with regards to the earned runs through 27 ERA, but the underlying metrics of both FIP and XFIP and the upper fours, he's actually going kind of the wrong direction. I know he's not giving up many earned runs, but I'm really high on a lot of the red starting pitchers, Green and Lodolo, for instance. Abbott, I'm a little bit more concerned with, if he keeps pitching like this and against the Orioles offense, who can do some damage, the runs are going to follow. It's just a matter of time. Uh, so I think Abbott's a better pitcher, here and the orals are a little bit left-handed heavy so that is to abbott's benefit as well uh but the starting pitcher edge may not be as much as you would think if you just looked at abbott's era the orals bullpen just kind of run of the mill again changes everything if you have a guy like felix bautista unfortunately for them they don't this is pretty close to a toss-up game uh the model has uh, the orals as slight favorites the market has the orals as slight favorites uh this is one that i think is priced really really well I don't think there's much of an edge to it right now. Maybe there will be again in the first five. Um, I'd be looking more at the total market on this one. Right now, I'm seeing nine market uh, market at nine models is 9.7. So I might be looking a little bit over their push production on nine could be valuable. I don't really trust the Reds relievers and the Orioles relievers can be kind of hit or miss. This Orioles offense can put up some runs. Hitter friendly ballpark. I'm not a huge believer in Abbott. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to get from John Means coming back. So a total of nine might be looking at an over might be your best play in this one rangers and the royals 7 10 p.m eastern first pitch mid upper 50s slight breeze in slight breeze across it's going to matter folks if the wind's more in this park's going to all of a sudden play slightly pitcher friendly if it's across it's going to stay slightly hitter friendly you're talking about the difference between projecting maybe in the mid to low eights versus the upper eights right now the market has a total at nine i think that's a little bit too high if this wind shifts to be in, I think it might be a decent bit too high. If it stays across, I think it might be barely too high, but maybe not really worth running to play. Still, this Rangers offense is better than the Royals. Royals bullpen, though, again, one of the most improved in baseball. Rangers bullpen, reasonable enough. Dane Dunning and Michael Waka. Uh, Waka, at this point, I think we know what he is. That 424 ERA, underlying metrics are slightly better than that projection, slightly worse, very run-of-the-mill average. He's been around long enough. You know what you're going to get from him. It's just kind of, like I said, run-of-the-mill average. Dane Dunning, pretty similar. Been around enough at this point. We're going to get an average uh, you know, performance out of him, 413 ERA. XFIP better, FIP higher. I mean, this is just pretty split with regards to the pitching and the bullpen. I think it's really a wash. The Rangers' offense is better, but the games in Kansas City offsets that a little bit. The model says the Rangers win this 55% of the time, and that anything minus 110 or better gets it to an A grade. So if you can find 110 or better on the Rangers, I think it's worth a play. I don't really think there's an edge to be had in isolating any part of this game other than the offenses, and that's where the Rangers – are more likely to win this game than not because the pitching I think is all pretty solid. It's just the Rangers offense is why they should be probably bigger favorites than they are. Mariners and the Astros, mid upper seventies in Houston. They could open the roof if they want. They might not. Who knows? Uh, TBD on that. They, they kind of go different directions on it. Logan Gilbert for the Mariners. Very good. Frumber Valdez for the Astros. One of the better pitchers in baseball made his return last weekend in Mexico city so far on the season. Had some concerns with what I saw from him early on, but now it's looking pretty good. Three starts on the season, 260 ERA, 268 FIP, 308 X FIP. I mean, there's really nothing to be that concerned about for him. The biggest concern is that this marriage offense against left-handed pitching grades up pretty well as they are a little bit right-handed heavy right now. Uh, Logan Gilbert, 
203 ERA, he's not that good, but I mean, a FIP and the XFIP in the low threes, he's a very good pitcher too. So I think the Azure have an edge at starting pitcher here, but I'm not sure it's by how much of an on offense. I'm not sure it's by how much bullpen. Again, and this is the, the theme of, of it, it, there's just, just this cadence to baseball season, right? You start off the first couple of weeks and no one necessarily has known anything and no one's going to react to one thing. And so you just kind of have this, what we think. Then you hit this kind of late April into May and it's how do we react to these things? And I know what's happened, but it's a small sample size and we have a lot of other data on this. By the time we get to June, July, you know, then at that point, the sample sizes are adding up and we're starting to get a better feel for what's happening here. But we're still in this kind of, I know the Ashes bullpen has been terrible, but like when you look at it, you know, Abreu, Presley, and Hayter, like that's a pretty good little trio there. And there's really nothing that says there's no like, you know, this guy can't find this pitch. He can't find the zone. He can't find his velocity. Like, these guys are probably still going to be okay. Uh, Mariners, I said it before, I'll say it again, the biggest thing, you know, they get a guy like Brash back and all of a sudden that really shifts their bullpen from more middle of the pack to top third. Uh, but at this point, probably a wash. I don't think that's really a big thing. Both these bullpens are solid. Uh, Ashes bullpen has struggled so far, but I think they'll be okay. Uh, got the Ashes as favorite in this one, winning 59% of the time on the heels of a slightly better shorter pitcher, maybe a slightly better offense, uh, and being at home. Minus 128 is the A grade threshold for them. Right now, I'm seeing low minus 130s. It'd be Ashes or pass on this one, but it's a good, if this doesn't get to the A grade threshold, might be good to wait until the first five. Not that the Ashes bullpen, again, not that I don't necessarily trust them. Might be good to look at the first five on the Astros if the price is decent and just say that way we don't have to worry about it. And we say we think they'll figure it out, but they haven't yet. And this way, we don't have to stress about it. You know, if we can just get our win after five and move on rather than them holding it on. It's not like the Mariners bullpen is terrible and I'm waiting for them to give it up. You know, they, playing against the Angels, a lot of times I want that full nine. I don't even really care about the difference because I'm like, you know what? I, I, I want those innings. They may not give it up, but I like my chances, right? The Mariners bullpen's not bad. So first five might be a better way to look at the Astros. It may not, depends on what the price is. And again, that's why we have the thresholds. That's why in Dub Club, every single game, I've got, you know, Astros, you know, first five, what's the probability they win, what that price should be, what the B grade price is, and what the A grade price is, so that you can see that and say, this is the price I'm looking for. So I'd probably rather play first five of the Astros, but we're always looking for the best value. It's Astros or pass in some way, uh, given the current prices. I said it before and I'll say it again. The Ashes are the most hilarious team this year because every couple days we turn around in the market has completely overreacted one way or the other. They're they think they're terrible and they're not as bad as they think. They think they're good, they're not as good as they think. It's 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 kind of funny. So we'll probably be back to fading them in a couple in, in another week. But at this point, might be some value in the Astros. They won two or three against Cleveland, and again, they're being priced as if they're not that good right now. But a couple of these healthy pitchers, this Astros team's probably going to play a lot better. Uh, because they've just been so injured on starting pitcher front. And if getting from Valdez back uh, matters a lot because he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Mets and the Rays. We see a dome here. Chanel Weathers, who Christian's got to be making his debut. Uh, oh, I didn't take out the value. Uh, yeah, it didn't. My, my code did not like uh, coming in the fact that the model does not give out a grade until a player has hit the 40 man rush. So that's how it's done today. I have been looking at seeing if I could fix that so that it go has, goes ahead and signs them. Uh, a grade even without a ranking so kind of working on that but as of now no grade for christian scott but uh, he's a very reasonable prospect and as i've mentioned a lot here with in the past right when you get a guy coming up and you don't know a ton about him you can use some of their minor league data to help project the other thing is how good the bullpen is and how good the team is tells us a lot because they could go with a bullpen game and the fact that they are not going bullpen game well, partially is because they they have I think like 26 games and 27 game days so it's partially that but it's also partially the fact that they have someone they think they can trust which means they have someone who they think is as good if not better than a bullpen game so we can kind of make a pretty reasonable projection of how um you know how he's going to do based off of knowing what the team's alternatives are and so we have a pretty good handle on how to grade some of these guys coming up even though they don't have a lot of data and i think he'll do just fine i think he's a pretty reasonable prospect i think the mets bullpen's pretty good that helps him out they're not going to expect him to go seven obviously they would take it if he does uh but they're not dying to do that this race offense continues to struggle they've been one of the most disappointing ones in baseball going down 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 the mets offense has been okay the mets bullpen grades out really strong on the race bullpen. That might actually be the biggest issue for the Rays is their offense. You have to think will kind of figure it out and at least be okay. The bullpens look dra just dreadful. Uh, right now we've got this at Mets winning 52% of the time. The A grade threshold's plus 104. 
and I'm seeing plus 110 on the Mets. So no reason not to hop on and no reason why you actually want the bullpens involved. So uh, pretty strong play here on the Mets for Saturday. Padres and the Diamondbacks, a war win in Arizona. Low eight, one for this time of year, obviously, not one for Phoenix standards. Low, mid to low 80s. A game where they might open the roof or might close. They do some different things there that kind of defy what I would think of temperature-wise elsewhere. So not sure what they're going to do on the roof on that one. So, so keep, check back on that one. Michael King for the Padres hasn't been great. Area of five. XFIP in the sixes now his or excuse me his FIPs in the sixes XFIPs in the low four so you're you're holding on if you're a Padres fan you're holding on for dear life that XFIP of four twenty five and saying that's what he's going to be but the FIP of six twenty eight he's been a little unlucky with the home run ball but I mean there's some concerns right now the model is grading him out as average could kind of go either way there's there's some things to be concerned about for him for sure Brandon Font uh, for the Diamondbacks. A little bit inflated the RA, but a FIP and an XFIP in the mid to low threes. I, I much prefer Fault in this game. I think he's the better starting pitcher, even though they grade out the same. I, I like Fault here. Bullpen-wise, both meh. Offensive-wise, both solid offenses. Uh, we've got the Dunbacks winning this 53% of the time. I'm looking at this thinking I'm going to have a hard time playing the Padres. Right now, it's priced pretty well. The model would say maybe the tiniest, tiniest edge to the Padres, but unless it's a big edge, I'm not playing them. Uh, like I said, I just am more concerned about King, and I have more faith in Brandon Fought. So um, I would be looking to the Dimebacks in that regard. That said, the current price in the Dimebacks looks really inflated. So that might just make it a pass for me with regards to the side. Again, first five, maybe we'll see how that plays out the one market in all sports where we can take the half and it might have a massively different projection might should or shouldn't the model and market can get different things, right? Because you're only doing starters, not really, which I know the sport has that dynamic. So first five, maybe, but full game don't really think there's a good edge in the side and the totals price really well too. total market I'm seeing is at nine model projects 8.9. So the night cap, 9 p.m. Eastern, again, the series of the weekend, Braves and the Dodgers, the two best offenses in baseball, Bryce Elder and Tyler Glass. Now, Elder has looked really good in his two starts, massively outperforming his peripherals. It stopped me if you've heard that before, but he's done that before and then eventually came back and got him. We'll see. So far, the FIP is okay. The XFIP's a little bit high. And again, He's had enough mediocrity in his career. I'm I, He might be decent, but I'm not convinced he's going to be good. I think it's the Dodgers offense that could spell disaster. Tyler Glass now, one of the best starting pitchers in baseball. Sideline has him as the fourth best active pitcher. Every time it comes around to start for him, I say the same thing. You have to be thrilled if you're a Dodgers fan with this pickup. Fantastic ERA. His FIPS the exact same as his ERA, 272. X FIPS even a little bit lower. I'm not sure he can keep that up. Uh, if he does, just give him the Cy Young now. But either way, he still projects to be really, really good. I mean, just a fantastic pitcher uh, and a very nice grade from the model. Bullpen-wise, give the edge to the Braves. That's the biggest area they have the edge here. Not that the Dodgers relievers are terrible, but the Braves relievers are among the best in baseball. They've got so much depth. And that helps a guy like Elder. And that's built into the projection. That that helps Elder, that they don't need six in the room. Now, he's gone six per, per in his first two outings. But he's the Dodgers, I don't expect him to go six. They don't need six. Four is probably fine with all the good arms they've got. Maybe even five. They don't need him to go through a ton. That helps them out. So that's the Braves kind of saving grace in this one. But I've still got the Dodgers as big favorites in this one, winning 62% of the time. They should be favored at a price of minus 160. Right now I'm seeing minus 162. Folks, I said this uh, to everybody on Dub Club. And I'll say it here with this series. It's the most scrutinized series so far of the season. It's the two best teams in the National League, or the, the teams we, that we think will be the best. Apologies, right, to the Brewers or Cubs, one of which will win today and get to their 20th win. Apologies to you know, the Phillies, who have 21 wins, right? But these are the top two teams uh, in the National League, and probably the top two teams in baseball. Uh, apologies, I guess, to the Orioles. And everyone's focused in on it and it's going to be really hard to find an edge. There might be an edge here, might be an edge. There might be an edge because of some perceptions, but in general, the bigger the game, the more scrutinized the game, the harder it is to find an edge on, on average. So I'm just going to say, no, let's not press and try to find an edge here. That doesn't exist. There might be a little bit of an edge to the under Friday night's game. I think the total got to nine and a half. There might be a little bit of value on that because you get the win at nine this game there might be a little bit of value going under nine you get the push protection on nine model says 8.4 
the totals might be a little bit inflated because everyone knows these offenses are good. But the problem, counter to that is these offenses are good, right? So it's not like you're loving to go under either. So might be a tiny bit of value on a couple of things in this series, but we're not going to try to press into playing it just because it is the big series. It is, uh, but that sometimes means that the, the that there's there's not going to be value to be found, and that we want to find the value in the other games where it's this team started off this way, and we really are buying into it. And so we want to keep backing. We're really not thinking it's going to continue. So we want to fade on that sort of thing. And this one, as interesting as this series is, there just might not be a lot of value on it. Should be great games to watch. Dodgers are favored. They should be favored. It's hard to fade Tyler Glass now. Uh, like I said, maybe you can get an under and just you know hold your breath at the Braves combination of elders. Voodoo magic where he gets to outperform his peripherals and all those relievers can hold the Dodgers in check enough to keep it low scoring. Might be the best way to play this, but otherwise... It's hard to say that there's going to be any value on either side there. That's our show. That's all the 15 games here for Saturday. Again, Discord chat group, full slate of picks, updates when there's pitcher changes, all the picks, the first five, run line, et cetera, summaries, thresholds for everything you need, all sorts of information, and more. Over on Dub Club, link in the show description, that QR code to get started with a 10-day free trial. We take Sundays off, so we'll be back for Monday games. Best of luck this weekend, and as always, remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.